Hi guys, welcome to under Solidity um, Developer Training. So this is where we train you to become a full stack de uh, Solidity Developer and make you gain confidence in um, being able to build anything um, you have to do. So now today we'll actually be looking at the fun part. We'll be looking at the practical aspect of things where we'll be um, writing Solidity code looking at um, the remiss ID and all that. So that is basically what we'll be looking at today. So now let's start. So first, before we start writing our code, I would like to introduce us to the ID we are going to be using. And basically, we all know what ID is. ID is um, simply refers to as integrated development environment is an environment that enables us to write our code or simply put we can put id as a software or web application that enables us to um, write our solidity code um for this for this tutorial what we'll be using will be the solid um the remiss um platform so the the, the remiss online web platform so it enables us to start writing solidity code within a shortest amount of time rather than just using the a normal VS Studio start setting up. So just to reduce time, that is why we'll be going for Solidity. So as you do more complicated stuff and um, some difficult stacks, then we start, we're definitely going to move to our, um, the editor that is um, on our PC locally. So now to first start, now let's just look at some UI. So basically the Remis um, presenters with um, this um, contract folder section. So this contract folder section is where we are going to create our Solidity um, um, file so that will contain our contract. So now let's start, but before we proceed, I'll delete some files because I want us to just have a clean folder and so we can just focus on what we have for today. So rather than dealing with folders and all that, so I'm delete it. So, and make everything clean. Did this also. So now we start. Now this is the remiss ID where we're going to be writing our solid code. Now let's create our file. So our file name will be practice.sol. Then so now. We've been able to successfully create a Solidity file, and this the extension we have in .sol is basically telling the compiler that this file we are having here is a Solidity file. So whenever you are creating your, whenever you want to create your smart contract file, make sure you put the .sol after the name. So it is the extension is just telling us that. Um, we are creating a solidity file here. So for those that are experienced that have knowledge in the web two space, they already they are already aware of this. But for the new beginners, whenever you are creating your solidity file, ensure that after the name, then you add the .sol that you are seeing here. It basically tells the compiler that this particular file is a solidity file. Now, before we start creating our contract, I would like to draw our attention to some things we need to do before we start writing our code, before we start writing, creating logic for our smart contract. So now before we start writing, before you start writing any of your code, you need to specify the uh, licensing your code is using. So licensing is uh, basically guidelines on how a specific code is used. So now to specify the license of our code, write the SPDS license identifier. So you write the SPDS license identifier, then, then you now put this MIT. So this MIT is basically telling, uh, telling us the um, a code license that the code we want to create is basically using although it is not really important for you to really put this um license ident this license but you know there's a solidity compiler that might show an error that you need to put a license but it's not actually compulsory for you to do that so now the important so the second compulsory this one is actually compulsory for you to put 
the second thing we need to um, put now is we need to tell Solidity the compiler version we want to use. Now, the Solidity language is a fairly new language compared to other languages such as Python, JavaScript. These uh, Python, JavaScript are they are languages that have been existing for a, um, a long amount. A, a, uh, that have been existing for long, but unlike Solidity, is a new language. They are experiencing a constant changes. So now that is why we now need to specify. The compiler version we really want to use for the code we are we are using and why why do we need to specify the compiler version uh we need to we need to use because um we have different solidity version too it basically enables the compiler to compile our code to the right version of the solidity so that's why we need to specify our compiler version and to specify the compiler version we use the keyword pragma pragma solidity so this will um, automatically tell the solidity compiler that okay this keyword tells the solidity compiler that this we are basically specifying the solidity version we are interested in and to specify the solidity then just after the pragma solidity keyword all you just put the version you want to use then 0.8.0 0 0.8.0 0 .8 after that um, you put a semicolon although I'm still getting an error here saying so source file. So now, so now we've been able to tell Solidity the compiler version we want to the Solidity version or the compiler version we are actually interested in. Now we are getting an error. So why are we getting an error? Let's take a thought of the miss ID. So now if you look at this section here, so in this section here also, um, we miss also give us a user interface. Uh, in which we must uh, use an interface to select the compiler version we need to use. So now, because of now, because um, I specify, because in my remix ID, we specify version 0.8.7, and the uh, version that I said I want in my Solidity code is 0.8.0. So definitely, the compiler will throw an error that the, uh, the version that is available is 0.8.7 and the version I specify is 0.8.0. So now to fix it, I'll just go to the solid, um, the remix ID to select the right version, then click on this, click on current to save. Go to save, it should, the error should go away. Still compiling, let's give it some time. The error will definitely go away because now the versions is Solidity compiler version and now matching. So now if you see what I currently have here is 0 0.8.0 and what I have here is 0 0.8.0. So what I select on the um, remiss um, interface, the compiler section is 0 0.8. So now the Solidity compiler version I selected is now um, tallying with the compiler version that I'm selecting from the remiss user interface. You realize that if I decide to change this, um, the compiler version I selected here. If I decide to change it, then save my code again. Then we realize let code, let's wait for the code to compile. You realize that it will definitely show an error because the version I selected is 0.8.0 and the compiler I selected is 0.1. So they are not telling so it will definitely show an error. Can you see? An error has been shown because the versions I selected that I need is not what I'm selecting from the uh, remiss user interface. Now, um, Solidity also gives us a flexibility of selecting, uh, of, of selecting, uh, it gives us a flexibility of choosing the compiler version we want. So now, in Solidity now, are they being we, we are just interested in, in compiler version that are starting from 0 0.8.0 up to the latest version. All we just need to, so now to tell Solidity that we are interested in compiler version that is starting from 0 0.8.0 up to the latest version, all we just need to do, press a control shift. If you're on a, if you're on a Windows, then control shift, then a arrow. Then this is basically, with the help of this arrow, attached to the um, 0 0.8.0 is telling Solidity that now in this code, we are interested in Solidity compiler version that has started from 0 0.8.0 up to the latest version. So now if we select 0 0.8.0, uh, if we select 0 0.8.5 here, the, an error will not be true because we said we, knew, we are interested in version starting from 0 0.8.0 up to the latest version. And if we remove this arrow now, 
And then we remove this arrow and we save. We realize that an error has been thrown because what we select here now is 0 0.8.7 and the version we said we are interested in is 0 0.8.0. So this is um basically it. So now to remove the error, I will just put the arrow back to inform Solidity that I'm interested in Solidity fashion starting from 0 0.8.0 up to the latest version so now it also give us a range you know what we just do here now we we just tell solidity that we're interested in version starting from 0.8.0 up to the uh, latest version that is we, we we don't really have a fixed um the version the, what, what 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 happens if we have like a million more what happens if we now have a million more versions after this uh this um compiler version we are we are choosing so that is we can choose any um so that is we can choose any compiler version between this one and up to the latest version but what what about if you if you want to be more specific if you want to tell us that what, what about if you want to tell solidity that we are interested in compiler version that are between 0 0.8.0 and 0 0.9.0 so how do we do that to do that basically put your greater than or equals to and less than 0.9.0 so definitely so what we just tell solidity now is that okay now could we're interested in solidity version that are between 0.8.0 and less than 0.9.0 that is if 0.9.0 is selected here then definitely an error will be true so th that is how this th these are the various ways in which you can select the solidity version you are interested in now Let's go into what we have for today. What we basically want to do is uh, we want to create a contract. So now let's create a contract. So what are contracts? Um, what are contracts? We can see contract as like uh, a container that contains a set of logic that is that that will perform a, a the same operation. That is container a contract basically contain a set of codes that we a set of related code that are performing the same operation so now let's say um we want to create a contract that is create logic create a um, token so now the code we are so now so we create a contract that uh a contract that we want to use in creating token so whatever logic whatever function here they are related so they want to the 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 all the functions or they all they are working together to enable us um create a token so that's basically what a contract is a contract enables us to let's say like organize or or act as a container to contain a set of code a set of similar code that are performing a um, similar operation now to proceed into what we have for today to pro let's proceed into what we have for today now what we'll be looking at we'll be looking at the various data types in solidity what are variables we'll be looking at what are variables and what are data type so now what are variables to those of us that have experience in the web 2 coming from the web 2 background we all know what variable what variable has and what variable are and we, know, and we all know what data types are so now what are variables uh variables for beginners variables are just see variable as like a container that enables us to hold values they just they are just containers they enables us to hold value and i also want to draw attention to this thing is solidity is a statistically type language that is solidity is similar to type script so when, when, when you say a, a language is a program language is statistically type what it basically means is that we 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 must we will always inform the uh, compiler the language compiler or um, the solidity of the type of value we want to store in a variable you know as we said we said variable is a container that is if it is a container we can store different type of values there we can store an integer we can store a string we can store any type of value in a variable so now because solidity is a statically typed language we must always inform solidity of the type of um the, uh, of the type of value we want to store in in the variable i didn't want to store a number in a variable now we must always inform solidity before that number is stored in that variable and that is why they are regarded to as a statistically type language unlike programming language such as python and javascript um where we don't where they are not statistically typed so where we just like assign the variable and the 
uh, program language does the work of identifying the type of values that are stored in this variable. So that is what we mean by that. Now let's go into let's now look at the various data types we have in Solidity. Now, so data types in Solidity. Data types in Solidity. So now basically we have two categories of data types in solidity we have um we have the value type and we have the reference type so we have two categories one we have the value type of the value type and two we have the reference we have the reference type so now let's understand we have value type and we have the reference type. So now what are value type? So the major distinction between two type of variable is that the value type variable, the a unique location is always assigned to them for, for them to uh for them to store their values. That is any any um any variable that is marked, any variable um that is uh, the value type um the value type data type they have their own unique storage that is given to them where they store their value so that is for each value type variable that is created there's a corresponding storage location for them to store their available their, their values that is why they are regarded to as what as value type they have their own unique storage unique storage location that is assigned to them so now unlike the reference type the reference type, um, the, the the reference type um, data type is that they don't have a unique uh, location that is assigned to them. If a reference type um, variable is created, what basically happens is that the reference that is reference to the location of where that um, the reference to the location of where their value is being stored, it is what that is what will be assigned. To the reference type variable so now let's assume now that i create so now so let's just see it like that so we've talked about the value type and we've talked about the reference type that is reference type for each reference for for each value type variable created uh there is a unique location that is given to them for them to store their value why for the reference type a unique location is not given to them rather a reference to where their value is stored that is what is given to them so that when, when we are not in need of the reference type variable then we are now giving so we'll just be giving the location of where their value is being stored for us to obtain the value from so just see like that although um it's not important for you to understand everything but as time goes on trust me you will definitely understand all this and you will definitely understand all the concepts here now so now for me to for me to break break it down now let's uh, so let's just see it as that now so we said um, data types in solidity fall under two categories the value type and the reference type now we now have various data types that fall under this value type category now we have the unit we have the unit we have the unit we have the int, we have the strings, we have the bytes, we have the um, address, we have the boolean, we have the enum, we have the int, int, string, byte, address, boolean, enum, then um, Unit string byte address boolean and enum. So these are basically the data types that fall under the value type category. Now let's look at it one by one. So let's start from the unit and the int. So now this unit and the int they basically fall under the integer category. So now the units are regarded as units are regarded as what as unsigned integer they are regarded as unsigned integer why the int are regarded as what assigned integer so now if you look at so definitely unit is a symbol to represent unsigned integer int is a symbol to represent what 
a sign integer. So now, what is the difference between these two variables? They have their own unique difference, and we really need to understand the, the difference between these two these um these these two data types. Now, when we talk about um the unit and the int, they fall under the integers category. So ints are basically positive numbers. They are not negative numbers. They can assume a negative uh they, they can assume they, they can be they can be negative. They are always positive. And examples of this unit um data type are zero. One, two, three, four, up to what? Up to infinity. These are basically what these um units um data type are. But for the int, they are negative um data types. They can be both positive and they can be both negative. That is, example of the int data type are one minus one, two minus two. So these are examples of the int and the unit um data type. So now, the unit and the int they come in various variation. We have the unit 8, so we have the unit 8, we have the unit 16, unit 16. So in the steps of 8 up to unit what? Up to unit 256. 72 applies to the int, 72 applies to the int. We have different variations. We have the int 8, int 8, um, have the int 8, int 16, up to what? Up to in steps of 8, up to what? Up to int up to in 256 then another question comes why do we have unit 8 why do we have unit 16 why do we have unit 256 and also why do we have in 8 why do we have in 16 and why do we have in 256 now let's go back to uh the let's go back to where we, we are coming from now why do we have in 8 why do we have in um you in 16 why do you have in 256 and why do we have in 8 in 16 and in 256 now let's go back to the basics of programming now in the um, former days like long long time ago uh the basically we all know that the language that the computer understand are basically zeros and one and long long time ago what was used in programming uh, the what we're using telling the computer to perform a specific taxes are just a set of zeros and ones. But you know, as time goes on, it is quite difficult. Imagine when they ask you to be programming a web application in zeros and one. Do you know how difficult it would be for you to be writing code in zeros and one? Then that is why we now have high level programming languages such as Python, JavaScript, and um, Solidity. So high level um, programming language now enables us to write um, language using words, using human readable form. So high level programming language enables us to write, um, uh, enables, uh, uh, high level programming language enables us to write codes in human readable form. Then this um, high level programming language, they comes with what is called what, a, comp a, a compiler. It is this compiler that will then translate this um, set of, this code that, that we've written in human readable form into a series of what is zeros and one. Then where the form part, where, where we need to now pay close attention is now, now that the amount of zeros and one that is used to represent a code, it is what we will determine the size of that code. Now, let's assume we use a total of eight zeros and one to represent a particular code. We said that what we said that that code is what is eight bits or one byte. That is eight bits is equal to what one byte. Now let's now bring that concept into this. We have unit eight, we have unit sixteen, and we have unit two fifty six. Unit two unit eight basically means eight bits, and unit sixteen means uh, sixteen bit up to what two fifty six bit. So now why do we have this? So now in the web three space, we deal with gas. Whatever action we are doing. We are paying gas. We are paying gas to perform any specific operation. So, and this gas, we are, we, are, we, are, we are almost paying for any operation that we are performing. So now, we have, so now we have, you know, we have integers. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. And each of these numbers have their corresponding zeros and one. Don't forget, the amount of zeros and one that is used to represent any data on the computer, it is what we determine the size. So now, if we have like one, one might be zero and two might be zero and one. So now 
we have integers that can we have some integers that we can just re, the computer represent them with just one zero we have integers that the computer might represent them with ten zeros so now the question is now the the reason why we now have this unit eight this unit 16 and this unit 56 is to is to ensure that we are storing is to ensure that uh we are not storing we are not creating space we are not creating space more than what we are not creating more space than what is needed so this unit eight now apple store integers of of size eight bits this unit 16 now apple store integers of 16 bits and this unit 256 apple store integer of 256 256 bit imagine if you are having integers of 8 bit and we are storing it in 256 uh in 256 in 256 bit so what we are basically doing is we are wasting resources so all these things cost money and being able to use this string that you 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 in 16 in 256 you in 256 we help us what we help us optimize our code and we reduce what and it will reduce cash costs now to now bring this scenario into a more understanding to now share more clarity on this now so imagine if um you want to hold a meeting and for you to hold that meeting you need a all so now I know we have various or we have all of 10,000 capacity, we have all of 20,000 capacity, we have all of 30,000 capacity and the and the and all of 30,000 capacity will definitely be more expensive than all of 10,000 capacity. So all of 10,000 capacity will be more expensive than all all of just 10 capacity. Then you already know that the amount of people that want to hold your meeting is just 10 people. So what do you go for? You just go for all that that what that is just for 10 people and you and you and you and you and you avoid wasting money by renting all of 30,000 capacity in which you, you don't need. So the same concept will come to with this um solidity programming language. We have this unit 8 unit 16. You intend to insist in 256. These different unit variation are tailored for different integer sizes. So now, if you have unit of one bit, the unit of eight bit, then we store it in unit eight. If we have unit of size sixteen bit, we store in this unit sixteen. So same thing too comes with this um int. We have the int eight, int sixteen, and in two fifty six. So this is basically the explanation of integer. We've gone through the integer and we've look at a detailed explanation of um this unit and int so now let's go into another um data type that we have in solidity you know we have string so string so we have string now before we move further i would like us to you know we still need to learn how to you know create a, a unit variable and don't forget we said solidity is statistically typed programming language now how do we declare a, a unit variable how do we declare a unit variable so first to declare a unit variable you first need to tell solidity of the type of value you want to store in that variable you write your unit so which is telling solidity the, um, i want to create um the, the the type of value you want to store in a variable then the variable name let's say age then you've been able to tell solidity okay, solidity I'm creating a variable that is named age and the type of variable, the type of value I want to store in that variable is our word, our integer. So now let's now store an integer. Bam. Solidity compile without word, without train and error. Now let's now attempt to store a negative number here. What happened? You realize that the solidity gives us an error because what? And a unit, a variable that is declared an unit is only allowed to hold positive um, numbers like zeros one two three they don't allow words uh, they don't allow negative number so now let's now declare a int um variable so a int variable let's say ages we store our one we save we realize that it compile without train and error now let's put a negative number we realize that it, it also compile without train and error because the reason why is because the int data type they can either be what positive or they can either be what they can either be negative now let's now move to our string data type so our string data type um they are just basically number the normal text you see on the keyboard those are what we is regarded to as what our string let's say like name those are what the string data type are and for you to declare them you also need to tell solidity okay 
this particular variable I'm, I'm creating is a string variable. Then you tell Solidity that you want to create a string variable. Then the name of the variable, let's say name of my um, currency. Then name of my currency is equal to what? Naira. So now we've successfully been able to what? Create a string variable. Now, you realize that at every line of my code, I'm putting a semicolon. So now in Solidity, it is important for you to put a semicolon at every uh, line of your code. If you start to put a semicolon at, at, at every line of your code, then Solidity will definitely complain that, hmm, please just do that. It is a rule. It is a compulsory. Solidity would make it compulsory for us to do that. Then let's move to other um, data types. We have um, bytes we have bytes so now we have the byte and these byte data types they also occur in various um variation we have the byte one we have the byte two up to what up to byte 32 the same concept to apply that is it enables us to store um values of byte one so now if you have value of byte two then we store it in byte two if you have value of byte 32 we store it in by um, byte of what of byte 32 so same rule same concept with the uint and the int applies in this word in this um, byte um data type so now we can just what store our um string so now Now, let me add my variable name. Let me just say names. Now, to just create our bytes, byte one, our string. Semicolon to solidity string and error. I'm looking towards right, I guess because this is my network issue. Okay, sorry, I've not added my variable name. Then just put a random variable name. So solidity of compile without words, without train and error. So can you see change to byte one, byte ten, byte twenty-one, and so on. There. So so I just the um the bytes now. Let's look at the next um data type. So the next data type um we have uh, the addresses and the addresses are basically our wallet address then. So the address are basically your wallet address, the contract address, and all that. So let me copy my address. I'm trying to copy it and it's taking long, I guess. My network is a network issue. So sorry. Trying to copy my wallet address. Oh, my network is kind of bad at the moment. I don't know why. I'm just kind of bad right now. So, okay. I've been able to log into my wallet. Then let me copy my address. Then paste it. Then put the comic column. Boom. So, I will be able to create an address um, variable. Now let's create a boolean. I know the boolean can either be true or false. The booleans um, data type are either or true or false. Then for you to create a boolean, you put your boolean then as a number. Then is equal to what false. Then so and also I want to draw attention to something before I forget. When you are creating, we don't have um there's no we don't have null on undefined in solidity unlike other programming language and 
you know that when we say a value is undefined, uh, maybe a variable, uh, when you say a, a variable is undefined, that is, it does not have um, a value. So that is when we say we as we say a variable is undefined. That is, the the variable has been declared, but variable, but value have not been assigned to it. But in the case of the case is quite different for solidity. In solidity, we don't have any concept of null undefined because in solidity, whenever you create your variable, there's a default value that will be assigned to it by solidity. And for let's say for like an integer now, if you create an integer variable, the default value that will be assigned to it will be zero. If you create uh, a boolean uh, variable, the default value that will be assigned to it will be will be will be false. So those are the default value. But we want to explicitly add our own value to it now, which is what true. So that is it. Then now let's look at the last one. Let's look at enum. So you know uh, a special kind of data type in Solidity, they basically enables us to create a custom data type. So now imagine when you want to create a variable that is named status and the status is basically to indicate if a user is online or if a user is online. So and basically what you want to do is the variable you are creating, you just want to confine that variable to be what to just want that variable variable to be either offline or online so how do we achieve this that is when enum comes in so enum enables us to just narrow down the type of value that we can assign to our variable now let's say we create a view so now for us to now achieve that functionality we type your enum let's now create our custom data type and then let's name it to our status type let's name it status type then online and offline now been able to what successfully creating our custom data type which is enum so now for you to now create a the, the available of this type that we just create then you just put your variable um, the custom data type here then you now put the name of your variable which we, in our case now is status then so now as i said each variable that is created in solidity have a unique data type so same thing to apply with this with this enum. Although we are the one that created the data type, but the default value that will be assigned to this status currently now will be this this online this first um value here this online. Now we said enum just enables us to narrow down the type of value that a variable can that can be assigned to a specific variable. And I gave an illustration like maybe when you want to implement an online or offline functionality and the type of value that you just want to be assigned to your variable are either online or offline so that is when stuff like um solid um, enum data types like enum comes into into place they enables us achieve this and when you declare a variable as an enum data type then the for our case now for our case now we declare an enum data type so the default value that will be added data type will be this online it's online so now but if you want to explicitly explicitly add a value to it for us to add a value you put the enum name then the dot so the dot enable you access these values um online if you're interested in online then we put both offline so that is basically what the enum data type is now we are done with the value data types so let's move to the next uh data type that we are having Thank you.